Hi, I'm Claudia Brown Coulter with Pivotal Peace. I'm your go-to mediator for navigating divorce while parenting children with special needs, and I'm also a legal document assistant, LDA, based in the greater Los Angeles area. So welcome to Finish Your Divorce Fridays. Today's topic is making co-parenting easier. This is your guide of how to create a parenting plan. So let's just launch right into it. I Before I, well, I just said we're gonna launch, now I'm gonna say before I start. So, well, okay, before I start, uh, the more detailed your co-parenting plan is, the more detailed your parenting plan is, it decreases the likelihood of conflict. The more clear it is, uh, the less loopholes there are. But every situation is unique. So some of these things you're gonna like, some of them you're not. You really wanna put things in your parenting plan that are gonna be enforceable. If you wanna put some other things in there that maybe the court can't enforce but are important to the both of you, then go ahead and put that in there. So let's talk about the key elements. The words I'm gonna be using are words like custody and visitation, and we use that for prisoners. Your child is not a prisoner. This is just still antiquated language. So we have to talk about, there's two types of custody when it comes to children. Joint, nope, that's not right. Physical and legal, physical and legal. And in, in those dis custody descriptions, you could have joint or sole of joint legal custody, joint physical custody, sole legal custody, sole physical custody, okay? There's a couple options. So legal really refers to decision-making abilities. That also, especially if you have children with special needs, pay attention. Your legal custody refers that that includes your educational rights, your ability to sign that IEP, your ability to make decisions educationally for your child, and of course, medically in other areas as well. So then you wanna look at your visitation schedule. And really, I like it better calling it a timeshare. Uh, it almost sounds like a vacation. Um, <laughs> we love our kids, but it's not usually a vacation, but they're wonderful, right? They are just, they're wonderful. They're wonderful. So it's your timeshare. Um, so you wanna think about overnights. Where are they gonna be spending the night? And if you craft it that way, this is something that goes throughout the year. So things, I, I did have a couple who kept trying to make things about the school pick up and drop off and, and um, I don't have him during this time. So this is an ex it, 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 it was a little extra uh, because once summertime comes, that school time is going to be thrown out the window. And so that is your custodial time. So it's good to have something general in there. So if your custodial time ends at drop off at school, if there's no drop off at school, does that mean it never ends? No. So it's much better to say a time. The custodial time is from 9 a.m. Monday until 9 a.m. Wednesday. And then if school's involved, it covers school. If it's a, if it's a summertime or a vacation, uh, you know, a school holiday, it covers that too because it gives you a time. All right. Um, in addition to that, this is your normal everyday schedule. It just runs. It just runs and runs and runs. It never ends. It just keeps running, keeps running. And then you have your holiday schedule and it goes on top goes on top of this plan so you want to figure that out what holidays do you do you celebrate a lot of people celebrate thanksgiving um and then christmas or hanukkah and then sometimes easter maybe passover maybe yom kippur maybe some other holidays depending on your religious traditions you want to include the holidays that are important to you you could include things like yesterday's holiday the fourth of july and some people try to do that, but then it gets a little tedious because then you want to make sure you have Memorial Day and Labor Day and, you know, oh, let's not forget Flag Day. You don't have to go that deep. You can if you want to, uh, but it's really important to think about those major holidays. Um, if children are young, a lot of times parents want to include Halloween go ahead, feel free to include that, whatever works for you. The other thing that goes 
on top of your regular schedule that's just running all of the time is vacations. And I don't mean school vacations. I mean, you're going on a vacation with the kids. What does that look like? Up to how many days a year can you take them? How much notice does your spouse get? Who gets first pick that year? Is it just whoever schedules it first? Because you know, one person in the relationship is the organized one, the other person is not so much. So they're always gonna get the last pick of the vacation days. So you wanna kind of make things a little more equitable. So you've got this plan that's running and running and running and you have your holidays and the holidays are over and this plan is still running. You pick up where you left off and you went on vacation and then the vacations are over and this plan is still running, you pick up where you left off. I will say if you've taken a long vacation with the kids, and then you come back and it's on your custodial day and they haven't seen their other parent, you know, you could use a break. They could use a break from you. And their other parent probably misses them and they miss their parent. And, you know, hugs hugs are in order. They need to see their other parent. My two cents. Not advice, just my two cents. Okay. Then you also want to think about communication. How are we going to communicate with our children when they're not in our presence? Right, because you don't want endless amounts of text and phone calls and you're putting the kid to bed and here comes a FaceTime call and then it just gets them wound up. You want to have some protocols in place of when regular communication can take place with the children. Think about decision making process and this is especially important um, for my parents who have children on IEPs or 504s. What happens if you, if you can't reach an agreement? What are you going to do then? How do you make major decisions if you need to change doctor's offices or maybe if they need or want to do a certain extracurricular activity? How are you going to make those decisions? You want to think about transportation and exchange. If your other parent, the other parent lives far away from them, what are you going to do? Is, are you going to meet in the middle? Is the drop-off parent always the one transporting them? So if you're, if you're dropping them off with their other parent, are you taking them? And then when it's your time, they're bringing them to you or vice versa? It doesn't matter. There's no right answer. There's only the right answer for you. Then you wanna also think about your expenses. What expenses need to be incurred for the children? Because children are expensive. So, your kids may go to public school, but you know, there's clothes, shoes, food, uh, routine medical care, co-pays, extracurricular activities, after school care. I mean, it's just camp. It just goes on and on and on. So how is that going to be paid for? How are you going to split it? Is it going to be divided in proportion to your incomes? Or is it going to be just like, this was my idea. I'm going to pay for it. They're only going to go during my custodial time. Every couple's unique. And the other thing that needs to be talked about is child support. Even if you guys are like, well, we're going to have zero child support. We're not going to pay anyone anything. Great. That's cool. Um, the court still requires that a DISO master is created and submitted with your final agreement. And that's the child support guideline amount. And then if you want to do zero dollars that's totally cool too you have to fill out another form that says hey guess what it should be this amount but we decided to go to zero and we're both cool with it is the core cool with that you cool okay we all good I'm, I'm simplifying this process but if you guys agree great let's just get it documented correctly that's that is very common very common all right, so then let's talk about some things to consider as you're making this plan. So we know like kind of the, not the bare bones, but I guess so, you know, the, the, the main structure that should go into a parenting plan. So let's talk about some things to consider. The best interest of the child, right? You're making this, this plan for the kids. You have to think about them. It's so easy in a divorce to think about yourself and I know because I am divorced so as you're going through a divorce it's so easy to think about yourself and what do I want and I don't want to be away from my child for that long um, and I don't think this is best for them and then it's like but are you being honest is it because it's not best what's best for you and it's like no this is not best for them and then your other spot your spouse is over here thinking the exact opposite it's it's really really hard so you really have to try to think about their personalities style, their uniqueness, the things that are, their little fun, quirky things about them that you just love. 
and how you can make this as seamless as possible, as painless as possible. There's still going to be pain. It, there's still going to be a rip that you're going to sew back together. Hopefully, you know, you can sew straight. And it looks like an invisible seam. That's what we want. We want that for our kids. So this requires time. It requires time. Because when you do it right, it takes a little bit more time. And that's annoying. You might come up with the plan. And then if we're going with the seam thing, you might have to rip out the seam a little bit. You might have to change a couple of things because it's... You, maybe you try it for a little bit and it's not quite working for your child. That requires a lot of humility on both parents' parts to go, this isn't the best thing for our child. It's the best thing for you. It's the best thing for me. Like, we're good. Um, but it's not good for them. So we have to change this. Um, you want to be flexible and adaptable. Because sometimes a child gets sick and they just want to be with the parent who always comforts them when they're sick. Um, sometimes a parent has a work trip that comes up and they really can't afford to miss that. You, you need to have the kids extra time. Or maybe the kids have a special event coming up that your spouse forgot, your or former spouse forgot to tell you about. And then it's like, but it's really important and you need to take them there because it's your day. And then it goes back to, is this about me or is this about them? That's uncomfortable, right? Nobody wants to have their plans changed. It's uncomfortable. But then you go back to, is this in the best interest of my child? And you have to be, flexibility is always in the best interest of your child. And let me tell you something else. If you are flexible, you will eventually see the other side become flexible too. They will work with you. They will. It might not be right away, but they will. Okay, don't lose help. And then if you... um are having some disagreements. You want to include in your plan, what are we going to do if we can't agree? Okay, are we going to have a tiebreaker? Are we going to go back to mediation? How are we going to resolve this dispute? And then especially if you have, well, any child actually, how much can you keep their routine consistent? How secure can you make them feel? These are the things you need to be thinking about as you're crafting this plan of what would make my child feel the most safe and the most secure and the least disrupted that's the plan we need to implement right now. And if it needs to change in the future, that's okay too. So let's talk about some things that can help you have a little bit more of a successful co-parenting relationship. Communication, effective communication. Now you're going through a divorce, maybe you don't have the best communication right now, um, but this is the perfect time Working on your agreement, whether that's by yourselves or with the mediator, is the perfect time to practice those communication skills and really think about how do I communicate this in a way that doesn't fight, that's not provoking a fight. So you're, you're kind of changing your language around that. You want to focus on the child. So when you're having those difficult conversations, it's less about you and more about what does our child need. Just like I said before about being flexible, you want to be cooperative to a point and you want to compromise to a point. It doesn't have to be all of the time in every situation, especially if there's no give and take, if you're only given and, and the other person is only taking and you never get given to. No, you don't have to do that all the time. But this is a dance, right? Parenting is not easy and you need your other parent involved. So eventually they're going to loosen up around this. We hope. You also want to talk about discipline. Um, what type of things are okay or not okay? You cannot control the other person's house, but if you have strong beliefs against corporal punishment, if you have strong beliefs about the age of a child, the minimum age of a child before they can have a cell phone, those are things that you should have a conversation about. And they might not be conversations you have right now in this moment, they might come up later. But if you have open communication with your ex, they're your spouse now and they're eventually gonna be your ex, then when these things come up, you can have those conversations and you're more likely to be on the same page because all of this time you're building this goodwill. While you are making this parenting plan, you're starting from scratch, you're ending this relationship. And so you are kind of tearing down what you've built and you're creating something new and you're building this 
new parenting plan and it's built on a foundation of new level of trust and that only happens through open communication and time working the plan. And then you want to also, most importantly, support the child's relationship with their other parent. There are going to be times where the child does not want to go see their other parent. And there are going to be times when the child does not want to come see you. Both people should be like, oh, I'm sorry, boo-boo. It's your your other parent's day. You got to go. I love you. I will see you when you get back. And then go distract yourself. Go find something else for you to do and send them on their way. Find good things about your co-parent. I know, you need me to say that again? Find good things about the co- your co-parent, the person that you're divorcing, that right now it's really hard to see anything good about them. Oh, you need to get a magnifying glass out and like dig through and really search. Search for something good about them. There is something good about them. If they had attracted you in the first place, that... That goodness is still there and magnify it. Focus on the good. What you you focus on will grow. Highlight their good points to your child. Focus on the good. Okay. I know that's a lot, especially for a Friday and it's a little bit heavy um, because this is really hard. These are your children. You love them. You want them to be safe. And um, this is emotional, right? Your heart is broken. Or you feel bad because you just broke somebody else's heart. And now you got to deal with the children aspect too. And that's really rough. But thousands of people have done this before you. And they're doing okay. And their kids are doing okay. And that can be sad for you too. If you need help mediating a parenting plan, if you need help documenting your plan and your final agreement so that it can be court approved, go ahead and reach out to me. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you next Monday.